Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today will be a little bit different episode. Um, I wanted to show you guys how I do it when I print these large sections for the plugs that I'm producing. This time of the year is the printing season for me because in my hobby room I can either run the printer in the winter time and keep it warm or I would have to put a electric heater radiator on. So I use this time of the year to produce uh, plugs to, to last me uh, at least uh, a year or maybe even more when it comes to building boats. Uh, the picture you're, you're, you see here on the screen is uh, this is a section of this is the next section I will print for uh, US 55 Stars and Stripes that won the America's Cup in Australia in 1987. Dennis Connors boat. You can see I have a build plate that is 15.7 inches square or cube and uh, so it's 40 centimeters. Uh, the printer I'm printing on is called Creality CR10 S4 and mine is a little bit modified with a, an American made motherboard and an American made all metal hot then allowing me to to print these large sections uh, mostly without problems but anytime you have a 3d printer and you use it a lot you're gonna run into maintenance problems yet you're, you're gonna have to be prepared for that and I've done a lot of repairs on, on my printer over the years this printer will be five years old in the fall it's still still going strong you can see that the hull looks really really thick and this is a, an operation I do in in SolidWorks that I use called shell so I make the hull eight millimeters thick and that would if you did this solid PLA it would I, I don't even <laughs> I don't even it, it probably gonna take a week to print so what you do is you have an infill density and if we zoom in this is 25% infill uh, infill density and you can see we, we're using the grid pattern that I find works pretty good with the with these holes what you want is for the inner and outer skin to be connected like a, um, a honeycomb so I'm gonna reduce this down to 7% and slice it again <coughs> and we'll see how it looks so now you see that there's a lot less material but still plenty of material connecting the inner and outer skin allowing it to be a, a strong a strong hull section and these hull sections can be glued together with epoxy I use uh, five minute epoxy to to glue them together and then if I have any cracks where uh, uh, for example and it happens uh, this end gets gets releases from the build plate so you have a you have a a, a, a big crack between the two hole uh, sections I use some uh, uh, thickened epoxy to fix that and that just makes it stronger another thing that you can see is that every time the printer changes layer it 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 produces and you can actually see that on the G code here it produces a line here at the back you you can position that at the sharpest corner I I let it just form on the deck area because I do a separate deck mold I find it really really uh, hard to, to do the deck mold from the plug I do the deck mold a little bit smaller and I'll, I'll show that in another video how, how I have designed that if anyone is interested um, when it comes to the build plate adhesion I use something called brim and it produces a little bit extra uh, material down here to, to connect 
the, um, the the section that you're printing to the build plate and I think this this works pretty good and it doesn't add a tremendous amount of material but you can see you can see here that we're still at and, and my printer has a 0 0.8 millimeter nozzle I have tried one millimeter nozzle and but it the, the difference between 0 0.8 to one millimeter nozzle is is uh, very very big when it comes to your your model looks almost like you have you have um, a, a hose or something stacked on top of each other with but with the 0 0.8 millimeter and also and the build layer height is also important layer height is 0 0.55 uh, I can actually increase that for a big section like this I can use 0.6 millimeter which is 80% of the diameter of your nozzle is a safe I would not go to 65 and now you can see I went from one day 15 hours to one day 11 hours 21 minutes still use the same amount of res or filament but so I reduced the time a little bit on that uh, another thing that you can do, you can play with, is the wall thickness. So if I zoom in, you can see that I have a wall thickness containing of two rows of, of material. So and each of these is 0 0.8 millimeter. So this will give me a wall that's 1.6 millimeter. If I want a a uh, even stronger model I can increase the wall line count to three I can either change the wall line count here or I can just do the math myself and go to 2.4 millimeters which is 0 0.8 times 3 and slice it again but of course we're using up a lot more material and the the build time it adds nine hours and then some to the to the build time this produces an extremely strong uh, section but you can also see that it uses up more than two rolls of filament and I print six of these sections so it, it I, I try to I, I use uh, 1.6 millimeter or two for the wall line count um, uh, you can also th this is not meant to be I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of you uh, a lot better than me when it comes to 3d printing but uh, I use the presets for this print speed here and I can show you what that is I think it's uh, print speed I use 50 millimeters per second, uh, slower at the beginning, uh, and you, if you want better quality, reduce the print speed, but this is going to go up dramatically. I mean, you're gonna, you, you might spend three, four days to print, and the, and when you have longer prints, the risk of something going wrong, power outage or whatever happens. I mean. The, the risk of something going wrong increases so I find it especially now when I for the most part work from home the printer sits and and works behind me and I, I have basically full control over it uh, during the daytime at least and, and that works pretty good for me so so here this is uh, this is a little bit of of the um, the things uh, that I have learned uh, how to print these big uh, models if if you have um, you, you can of course design and have a, a like a wall going that here and you can do you can do your own infill there's tons of other ways to do it but I have found for these boats that are the biggest boat I've, I've built or I'm building right now is the mystery 12 
and it's uh, 87 inches long or 2 meters 21 centimeters long and it's glued together with with the uh, oh, I think it's 12 minute epoxy but it's quick epoxy glue and it holds together just fine and no fiberglass on it I fair out the um, the areas between the hull sections and sometimes maybe you have a little bit of a layer shift in, in the print uh, and I, I sand that and fair it out and it uh, basically if, if you are successful with the print and you've done a really good job on, on 3D modeling your hull there is very very little to fair out you can basically do just uh, where, where the sections are glued together add a little bondo and then spray filler maybe four or five coats of spray filler and then block sand it in between and, and you should be fine uh, uh, what I what I like about this this way of building my plugs is that they do get you 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 know you have a, a plug or a bolt that is very very close to perfect on you know both sides look the same and it's nice and straight and so I would like to take the opportunity to um, thank everyone for subscribing uh, 669 subscribers uh, I feel is unbelievably fun uh, I'm not making any money on this uh, channel uh, I have started to make some sales now and that is coming up in another video I have gotten some some uh, knowledge from a senior model sale maker that has helped me tremendously and I would like to say thank you to Mr. Rob Carr for, for doing that. I've actually sold my first suit of sales, uh, uh, put it in the mail on Monday, uh, no Friday, sorry, it's Tuesday today. So, um, Things are moving forward. Uh, the next uh, big project I have and uh, any input is welcome. I want to get hold of a winch system that is strong enough to sheet both main and jib because the the 380 winches I have called EL at the end they they just uh, cannot handle the they don't have enough torque. So something I, I have to do something about that. We'll go down to a smaller winch drum but I don't think I have enough travel on the winch if I do so this is uh, something that I would like to develop and I would like to develop a system where I can have two winches and use them in in more boats uh, because it gets very costly to have winches in all the boats so this, this is something I, I have also planned to learn how to measure the bolts so I can have them measure as 1.2 MRs and this is to be able to compare the different designs uh, more f fair so that you, if I build uh, US 55 and I sail it against Kookaburra if they both rate as 1.2 MRs it's 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 a more fair race so this is something I will work on this spring as well so thank you very much for subscribing uh, a lot of yapping from me in this video I hope you learned something if you have any other ideas of what I could do better please uh, comment uh, thank you for keeping all the comments nice and, and uh, tidy I, um, I do this uh, I don't consider myself a professional by any means. I do this because I love building all boats and and uh, if I can help anyone to get some pointers then fine and if you help me then that's very fine too. So thank you very much and uh, have a good rest of the week. Bye bye. So this here you can see the uh, the infill being pretty light, but enough to uh, com to connect the uh, in inner and outer shell. So thanks very much for subscribing, and I hope you liked this video. And uh, if you did.
please give it a thumbs up and thanks for all your nice comments hopefully a new build video this coming weekend when I can update you on the uh, two plugs that are nearing completion thank you and see you soon